work with the quadratic formula, and this is it, you should have it memorized. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And today we're talking about the discriminant. The discriminant is just the number that is underneath the radical. The discriminant does not include the radical. So you can use the discriminant to help you figure out ahead of time before you ever start solving what kind of solutions you're going to have and how many. So if you look on your notes, we are told that if this number, if the number that we get from b squared minus 4ac is positive, then there are going to be two real roots and they will be irrational. They will have a radical involved. If um, if this number is positive and also a perfect square, it's going to cause the radical to go away. And the solutions, there will be two of them. They will be real. But this time, there will be no radical left. And so they're called rational. And if b squared minus 4ac, if that number equals 0, then there's only one root. It's real. It's rational. We call it a double root. And then if this is negative, if the number underneath is negative, then that tells us that our solutions are complex. That's spelled out for you in your notes, but let's look at some examples. So I don't want to solve this as my first thing. I first want to calculate the discriminant. So on this problem, a is 1, b is negative 8, c is 16, and the discriminant is just b squared minus 4ac. So if I ask you to calculate the discriminant and you put a radical over the top of it, you're going to miss it. Negative 8 squared minus 4 times a1 times c16 means I have 64 minus 64. So the discriminant is 0. That tells us something. Anytime the, dis the discriminant is zero, there is only one solution, and it is real, and there will not be any i's in it, and it is rational, because there will not be a radical left, and we call it a double root. Now, on your instructions, it says, first calculate the discriminant, then determine the nature of the roots, what kind of solutions and how many do we have. We did that. Now, I want us to go ahead and actually solve this. If I were going to solve this quadratic equation, I think the method I would choose is factoring, because this is x times x, and this is 4 times 4. So if I solve by factoring, I will call this x minus 4 squared equals 0. Or I could think of it as x minus 4 times x minus 4 equals 0. Notice, when I write the factors like this, then either x minus 4 equals 0, or I say the same thing again, x minus 4 equals 0. That's why we call it a double root. The same solution happens twice. Because we know if it's an x squared equation, I should get two solutions. But the solutions show up twice. So x equals 4 and x equals 4. You don't have to write the same solution twice. That's how you know the solution does not have an i in it, so it's real. It does not have a radical in it, so it's rational. And it does not, there, the same root shows up twice, so it's a double root. Here's another one. On this problem, example 2, a is 1, b is negative 5, c is negative 50. So if I calculate the discriminant, the discriminant is just the b squared minus 4ac part in the quadratic formula. That means negative 5 squared minus 4 times a1 times c negative 50. Negative 5 times negative 5, that's 25. And then notice that we have two negatives. So minus negative 4 times negative 50 is positive 200. So this discriminant is one number. It is 225. The fact that 225 is positive tells us that we're going to have a real solution. The only time we only have one solution is if the discriminant is zero. So I know I'm going to have two solutions. They will be real because if I don't have a negative number under this radical, 
I'm not going to get something imaginary. Two real, and 225 is a perfect square. The square root of 225 is 15. So since 225 is a perfect square, the radical is going to disappear. I will have two real rational roots. The instructions on this say calculate the discriminant. We did it. They say determine the nature of the roots. That means how many solutions are we going to have. We're going to have two. And what kind are they? Real and rational. And then if we go ahead and take this one step further and solve, um, I might try to factor it. But really, since we've already got the discriminant calculated, I'm going to come up here and solve this using the quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B. Negative of negative 5 means positive 5. Plus or minus the square root of. I already know what I'm going to get when I do B squared minus 4AC. I did it right here. 225 all over 2A all over 2 times 1. That means this will simplify to be 5 plus or minus. There is a square root of 225. It's 15 all over 2. Don't leave it like that. It's either 5 plus 15 which is 20 divided by 2, x equals 10, or 5 minus 15, negative 10 divided by 2, negative 5. So then, now that we have found the actual solutions, we agree. We got two of them, two solutions. They're real, no i's in these solutions. They're rational, no radicals in these solutions. And, and those are, so we have two real rational solutions, roots. Number three, on this one, A is 5. Notice there's no middle term. There's no X term. So that means B is 0 and C is 42. So if we calculate the discriminant doing B squared minus 4AC, then 0 squared minus 4 times 5 times 42 means I have negative 20, zero, zero squared is zero. Zero and one negative sign means minus. 20 times 42 is 840. So the discriminant on this one is negative 840. The fact that we got a negative discriminant tells us the number under the radical is negative. The solutions are imaginary. The only time I just get one solution is if the discriminant is zero. All other times we have two solutions. So the nature of the roots, there are going to be two solutions, and they will be complex. And if we actually take this one step further and solve, I'd probably use the quadratic formula to solve this. Either that or, or take square roots. But since I've already got the discriminant, if I actually solve it, then x is equal to negative b, negative 0, still just 0, plus or minus the square root of negative 840 all over 2a, all over 2 times 5. That makes it just plus or minus the square root of negative 840. That'll make it i times the square root of 840 over 10. 840 actually simplifies to be, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, it simplifies to be plus or minus 2i square roots of 210 over 10. Then you could simplify 2 over 5, I mean 2 over 10 to be 1 over 5. So if I actually solve this, my solutions are plus or minus i times the square root of 210 all over 5. And we got two solutions, positive i squared of 10, i squared of 210 over 5, and negative i squared of 210 over 5. Two complex roots. One more here. This is number four on your notes. If I calculate the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, then I will, a is 2, a is 2, b is negative 9, c is 8, so b squared means do negative 9 squared minus 4 times 2 times 8, or 81, and then is it 81 plus or 81 minus? 
going to be 81 minus, because we only see one negative sign, A times A is 64. And then 81 minus 64 gives us 17. So the fact that we got 17 as the discriminant, it's positive, so, and it's not zero. I'll have two solutions. They will be real, because I don't have a negative number under the radical in the quadratic formula. But 17 is not a perfect square. I'll have the square root of 17 under the radical, and there's not going to be anything I can do to make that go away. So they will be real, but this time irrational. Two real irrational roots. If I use the quadratic formula to actually solve number four, it will look like this. X is equal to negative B, negative of, negative 9, that's positive 9, plus or minus the square root of, I already have B squared minus 4AC done right here, 17, all over 2A, all over 2 times 2. I can't do anything to simplify the square root of 17. So, my two solutions really are real, no I's in this, they're irrational, because there's nothing I can do about the square root of 17. My two solutions are 9 plus the square root of 17 all over 4 and 9 minus the square root of 17 all over 4. This is really two solutions right here. Example 5, you can't find the discriminant unless you make it equal to 0. So this one you'll have to put in standard form. 4x squared minus 20x minus 25 equals 0. And then, on this one, A is 4, B is negative 20, C is negative 25. If we calculate B squared minus 4AC, we'll have negative 20 squared minus 4 times A is 4 times C is negative 25. That's negative 20 times negative 20, positive 400. Then a negative times a negative means it's 400 plus. 4 times 25 is 100, and 100 times 4, we got 400 plus 400. So on that one, I think I messed up on that. I think I messed up on a sign. Oh, this should be plus 25. Minus 20x plus 25. So C is positive. Then it turns out on this one, 400 minus 400. The discriminant is 0. And if the discriminant is zero, your conclusion is anytime the discriminant is zero, there's only one solution. It's going to be a double root. One real 